Hey guys, how are we doing today? Well, this is my Kawasaki Vulcan I've had for a couple of years now, and it's been a great bike. I love it. Um, one thing that I've been wanting to do to this though is add a gear selector or uh, indicator. So when I'm cruising along, sometimes I don't know which gear I'm in, and it's it would be good to know. So they sell aftermarket indicators that you can just plug into your OBD port and then just mount them on the bar somewhere and you'll have it. But I don't want to just do that. So I saw somebody do something that I want to try to do. And what he did was he took the indicator and he actually mounted it right inside the gauge cluster here. And it looks like it's a professional um, installation. And I want to try to do that. So I've already bought the part. Uh, I'm going to need to take this cluster off of the bike and then take it apart and see if we can uh, do that. So I think this is going to be a good, fun little project. I'm going to uh, really like it when it's done. And uh, if you guys want to um, try it on your bike, um, at least you'll have an idea of, of how to do it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of measure where the gauge is. In case, because I have to take the needles off, I want to make sure they're in the right spot. All right, and then uh, let's get this cluster off of here. So to do that, I'm going to need an Allen key, which I have here somewhere. All right, and this is a 5.30 seconds I'm using. Put this right in here, we'll take this off. Okay, now this is going to just kind of lift up and push off. There's a couple of little pins here that it sits on. So we just got to get this up off of here and then slide it off. There's a plug here also we got to take out. Let's get that. Okay. And then push it off, and then the whole cluster comes out just like that. All right, so now uh, we'll take it back in the house and get it disassembled. Okay, so this is the uh, indicator that I got. Um, it's just got a sticker on there right now, but that's basically what it's going to look like. And I'm going to set it up so that it mounts in that position underneath the display. Uh, I guess this is through a company called. GFY. Um, so it comes with this and it comes with the connector. It comes disassembled, which is nice because I'm going to put it on the back and I have to run it through the cover. So it'd be a little difficult with that connector on there and I would have to take it apart. So, first thing we need to do is take these screws out so that we can get these covers apart. So, let me get that done. Okay, so there's a series of screws you have to take out. And then there is a rubber grommet that sits here and you need to pry that out once you get that apart then it comes apart okay so there's the cover with the glass on it we'll get that cleaned up and then we have all the electronics here so next thing I got to do is take this cover off and there is one screw back there that might be holding it so we'll try taking that out and see if that uh, takes care of it. We'll probably have to disconnect this connector here also. Okay, so that one screw holds the assembly together. You can take that out and then you can remove the cluster. There is um, a bulb that you need to remove and there are two connectors. Be very careful when you take those off that you don't break the pins or anything like that. Okay, and now we have this apart. So the next step is I got to take the two needles off so that we can take this front cover off of here. All right, so you're going to want to carefully pry the needles off of there. Uh, try not to damage your screen here. And then there is four screws uh, that you need to take out. Once you do that, then this lifts right off. Okay, so this is the piece we need. Uh, and there's no electronics left on here, so that's good. So we're going to be very careful with these parts and just put them aside. And then we're going to work 
on this here. So what I need to do now is I need to cut a hole in here and basically I need to line up where this piece is going to go which I believe is going to go like right about here so I gotta set that in place it does come with some double sided tape that we can secure that in place and then I have to um, I believe this front piece comes off and it'll just be the clear piece left so we can mark where that square is going to be. I'm going to use my um, laser engraver to actually cut the hole out so it's got a nice perfectly square hole. So uh, I'm going to work on figuring out exactly where I need that, get this plate off, and then we'll see where we need to cut. Alright, so I took the cover off and put it underneath the clear plastic. So this way I can see where it is I want this to sit. All right, so I'm thinking right about in this area here. All right, so I'm going to carefully try to mark that spot so I know where to cut it. And then we'll get this mounted under here once we get that lined up. All right, so I'm going to measure out the size of this indicator with my caliper here. Um, I don't think I want the hole that big, plus I don't really care to have it say gear. Uh, I'm just going to shorten it a little bit so I just see the number. So, Okay, so next thing I want to do is I'm going to tape the covers together to try to keep all these holes lined up. Okay, and then now we're going to figure out exactly where I want to put that screen. Alright, so I used my laser engraver to cut a piece out for a template um, and that's the size I wanted so we're going to take this piece and we're going to place it on here in the approximate position that we want it and then I'm going to mask it off and then we're going to try and uh, laser cut through there and see how that works okay well I am fortunate enough that I do have a laser engraver machine uh, which can also cut so we're going to be setting this up and seeing uh, if we can get this thing uh, to cut a nice perfect hole in there for me. Okay, we're going to cut one more test hole here, just to make sure it's still the same size. It's still same size. That's good. All right. Now here comes the tricky part. We have to set this up. Try to square it up. Right, so I'm gonna do an outline. To see where this thing is gonna sit. Once we have the hole cut out, we get it mounted in there and we have to drill a hole to run the wire through. So we're going to put the circuit panel back on and kind of bolt it together. Alright, so you can see I have the uh, selector installed on here now um, and we're just in the process of making sure that it works. So let's uh, turn the key on. All right. Now, what you got to do is you got to find your OBD2 connector, and on this particular model, which is in 2008, you have this connector here, which has this little yellow wire hanging off of it. Okay, so what you need to do is take the three wires. They give you a connector, but it doesn't fit, so you have to use the connector that was on there and you have to figure out which wires go where. It's going to be uh, white, black, and then red on the bottom. So on these here, you have these little tabs. You're going to have to fold those over and then take this rubber piece and kind of pull it back 
so that you can slide it in there uh, and get the pins to, to snap in there. So let me get this last pin in there and then we'll hook it up and see if it works. Okay, so we have the four plugs in there now in the right spot. And just push your little rubber boots back over there. All right. Okay, and then you're gonna want to snap that back together. Okay, so this connector is right here next to these three. This is on the passenger side. Okay, like I said, you get this yellow wire. I'm not sure what that is. If that's a test lead or something, but this is the connector. So now that that's hooked up. Let's see if it's going to work. And you can see it works. So that's awesome. All right, so I'm going to get this thing buttoned back up now. And uh, I think this is going to be an awesome addition to the bike. Uh, it's one thing that I really missed on this thing was a uh, gear shift uh, indicator. Um, so let me get it buttoned back up and uh, just verify that it works. Okay, so what I did was I took the wire Ran it under the tank, secured it to one of the harnesses under here, ran it down here, come around here, get it all zip tied, and then I got the connector right in here, so we got it all tucked out of the way. I'm going to put one more zip tie up in here just to hold that, and then we should be good. Alright, so the bike's a little bit dirty, it's been sitting all winter in the garage, so I'm going to get this thing hosed off, and uh, we'll get buttoned back up, and then I'll uh, make sure it's working properly. Alright, so we got everything all cleaned up, back together. See, it's working nicely. I think it's going to be a great addition. So I'm just going to take it for a quick ride, just make sure it indicates all the gears as I'm going through them. And... Uh, Next thing I gotta do is I gotta put some uh, front brakes on this. I do have one of the caliper bolts just to round it off a little bit. So I got a couple of new bolts for it. I'm gonna uh, replace those. I'm gonna get that, that rounded off one out of there. You know, we'll change the oil, check the tire pressures, all that good stuff. Get it ready for riding season. Uh, it's gonna be coming pretty soon. It's like to get back on the bike and ride again. So uh, yeah, we'll just make sure everything's working properly. All right, guys, uh, really cool upgrade. I'm glad I saw somebody do it. Uh, most people will just buy them and just stick them on the handlebars or something, and it looks kind of hokey. Uh, this looks factory. It's awesome. So uh, going to enjoy that. All right, guys, I uh, hope you liked the video. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up. Um, otherwise, uh, usual, like, share, all that good stuff. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one.